Welcome to Mark Jenkins Horsemanship. We're here at SS Ranch in Hager City, Wisconsin. I'm here with ranch owner Anne Marie, and I hope you enjoy this episode of Helping Horses Across America. And what we really want to try to do is get rid of the resistance. And the only way to get rid of the resistance is by getting horses to understand how to follow feel and move off pressure. If I thought I've got five minutes to get in that, that barn, it'd take me five hours. But if I say I have five hours, it's going to take me five minutes. And just because this horse is having a little bit of a hard time figuring some things out, you know, a lot of people get behind them and start whooping and hollering and, you know, hurry them in here. Well, you just gave them reason to be worried about what's going on in here. But we're, I'm going to paint a little picture, okay? How many are, uh, there's a ton of you, all right, in here? You're all predators by nature, and he's prey. Okay, so he's looking at this saying, uh, I'm not sure about this. We got all these predators in here, and he's saying, I'm not sure. Now, if I, if I got to the point where, where I wanted to hurry up and shove him in here, I'd give him more reason to be worried. But if I just take my time, yeah, I like you too. He's super nervous right now. And I like the fact that everybody's standing right here because that uh, it, hopefully we can build his confidence a little bit with all these predators. A lot of the things that, that we think should be super simple can be very, very complicated for horses. And if he gets loose from me, we'll send a search party out for him, okay? But I think he's gonna be okay. But we're just gonna try to let him think down to his feet Because he's super worried about this. So if, if you take a horse that's this worried about something as simple as stepping on the concrete and coming in here and echoes and all the loud stuff and whatnot and all the predators over here, and you try to force them, that's the same thing when it comes to trailers. People don't understand that. And even the sound of the concrete when he takes a step on it, that's going to be a different story for him too. There we go. I'm just going to go with him and try not to be a big issue, make it a big issue. And I'm gonna kind of make a beeline straight for the round pan uh, to just get to know him a little bit. And he gets in here and he's got all sorts of horses. He's got all sorts of things going on. I'm just gonna try to really make sure that I'm super, super monotone, I'm super relaxed and just really relax with him and let him just kind of find his feet and find his way. There we go, good job, bud. And relax with him the best I can. When you've got horses that are like this, and I'm hoping he's not one that, that wants to jump over the pen, because uh, I've had a few. And if he's not, then we should be able to get, and I know uh, there's a couple of horses here that this one just kind of came in here late, so please forgive me. I just let me kind of a special need, so I'm just gonna help out, help him out for a second, let him get relaxed. All right, so I think at this point, I'm gonna turn loose of him. And at this point, I really don't care where he goes, what he does, as long as he doesn't go over the pen or over the panels. So, like every other horse that's, that I've had in the pen, we're going to go through the same thing with this one. But again, I'm just going to come in here and try to feel this horse out. This horse, obviously, we've got the PA system, we've got the echoes, we've got lights, we've got shiny stuff, we've got banners, we've got all sorts of stuff in here. And this, this is new to him. You know, if he's only been in a pen twice, is that this is the second time he's been in here? Okay. Because I'm looking for that horse to start looking to me. And when they start looking to me, instead of worrying about everything else that's going out there, then I know that we've kind of gotten somewhere. This one's going to be a little different. So the other horses were all fairly easy to get kind of, they call it joined up. Okay. This guy's going to be a little different, I think. He just, he's telling me a story. Let me try it again. See, like right there, you already leaned to the right front leg. He's already thinking about checking out. Barry's licking and chewing again. All I want to do is see if I just can't come up here and, and talk to him a little bit. And then when I do, I leave immediately. 
And all I really want to do, all I really want to do is see if that horse will just look at me. And that's it. And when they get to that point, uh, then I know that the possibility of connecting with him is going to be there. So now we see him leaning on his left front. And he's curled towards me a little bit. I'm paying attention to those ears. There we go. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. So again, it's not necessarily every time I get a pen with a horse, it's not are they hard to catch, are they hard to load, are they, you know, whatever the case is, it doesn't really matter. What really matters is are they willing. If they're resistant, then you end up with big issues. So I'm going to mess with this over there like that. Thank you. I'm just going to go ahead and get a halter on the horse. I'm going to run through the same things that I do with most all the other ones. So just like with every other horse that we've dealt with in here, I want to make sure that I got control of that shoulder in a manner that's controlled and quiet. And this is just me figuring out this horse. This is just me and this horse having a conversation and trying to figure each other out. That's all it is. Licking and chewing a little bit right there. Got quiet with the ears, eyes. A little bit tense right there through the muzzle and the mouth. I'm just going to go ahead and send the source off one more time. But nice and quiet. My guess is as soon as you get up towards the trail, you're going to see them put on the brakes and lock up, like right there. So kind of, yeah, go side to side, and let's just see what happens with that. There, there's a few different ways to get horses loaded or to get through some of that resistance. And um, So what works for one horse might not work for another horse. All right, that's okay. Go ahead and, yeah, now you can go ahead and take it off. So, I don't know if this will work with this horse. Uh, obviously, there's a couple of easy ways, and then, of course, then sometimes you gotta, you gotta have a helping, helping hand. So, if you just want to jump out, that's fine. I just don't want you to get ran over. Um, but the easiest way that I feel for the horse is, uh, I would like to be able to move his feet out here and then just make that like this great big nice you know super awesome resort. But being claustrophobic by nature, they're definitely not going to choose that. They're going to choose the more wide open space. But I am going to apply this pressure everywhere out here. So this is one way uh, and we're going to keep going to keep doing it with this horse. But uh, this is one way of doing it. The other is if, you're, if your horse is real good about being sent somewhere, so you know, sending your horse left and right uh, on a lead line, then uh, that's another way to do it as well. And I prefer that way because obviously, unless you just run a stock trail, you can't just run them in there and let them go. So the whole point for this is making all this out here a little bit more difficult than it is over there. So every time this horse looks at that trailer, you take the pressure off. So if you notice right now, that's not even an option for that horse. He's looking at every other thing, even though he turns towards it. And I'll leave him right there. But even though he turned towards it before, he was just blaring right by it. He's not paying attention. He's not seen that as an answer yet. They're licking and chewing. That would give me an opportunity to put a little pressure. So it comes away from the trailer, pressure. Towards the trailer, none. There, he actually thought about it that time. And it's important, it's really important for you to let them take that time to absorb that decision that they just made. 
and really think about it. Now, if he would have just turned right back around, I would have put some pressure on him, but he's still looking at it. Now he's kind of gotten bored of it. The reason this is one way that's fairly good to do with horses that are just absolutely terrified of a trailer is because you take the predator factor out of it. Okay, so they're claustrophobic by nature anyways. And you go in that to them, that's a jail cell. So he's already super nervous about that. And then you put a predator in there with him, then he's going to be super scared. And most people will sit there and they, they look straight ahead at the horse and try to pull the horse on. And then they got another predator behind him just spanking the ground or hitting him with a whip. So you're just causing that horse all sorts of discomfort. And you're just giving them reason. You're giving them reason to fear that. Because all of a sudden, your intention is to get them in that trailer and you're putting all sorts of pressure on them. So that's just natural for them. And to be scared of it in the first place, but then you've got all these predators around them. And I've seen some horrific ways of putting horses in a trailer. And this may, may work for him, it may not work for him. But there's not a scary predator sitting in there. So he's only got one thing to be scared of. He comes out here, and this scary predator is putting a lot of pressure on him. Not in a mean way, but I'm just making it hard for him out here. So again, make the right thing easy, the wrong thing difficult. If you notice when he's over there, that's very easy. There's no pressure on him. When he comes over here, the wrong answer, wherever he may go over here, that's difficult. So I put a lot of pressure on him. Now, I don't want to scare him into that trailer, but I want to make that the, the coolest thing in the world to him. That's the easiest thing that he can do is look and get curious about that. But he comes away from it. And that's a breakthrough moment for him. Did that just solve the problem? No. Did we just get him in the trailer real quick? No. This is a process. Everything when it comes to horses is a process. Everybody wants everything done right now. These guys, got to you got to figure out a way to get these horses to think all the way down to their feet. And that communication between the brain and the feet have to work. Otherwise, it's just pure chaos. So this is the boring part. So I apologize to everybody. But this is the boring part. I can't scold him for doing exactly what I want him to do. <clears throat> but again, the key to this... And the reason that sending horses like this and, and, and uh, training your horse to get in there without the human element involved is to make it simple. Okay? He's only got one thing to be scared of, and it's my job to help him. So again, if he comes away from it, now that's a little different, but he didn't look away from it, so he took his attention away from the trailer. I just helped put his attention back. So that's him saying, ah, geez, I don't know. And that's saying him, him saying, okay, that's probably the best place that I could be. And he can bolt out, he can come out, because he's going to have a panic attack is what he's going to have. But here's that moment where you get the horse uh, to the point where there's nothing else, he just needs to figure out how to get okay with that. So there's nobody in there hooting and hollering, there's nobody trying to tie him up, there's nobody hurry up trying to shut a gate behind him. It's just him and that trailer get comfortable. You know, our young horses, when, when uh, we had yearlings and stuff, we had a big stock trailer, we just went ahead and fed him. So we never had worries about how to load a horse later on when we started getting them broke. So now I'm actually going to ask him to come out because he's sitting in there, which is good, and I want him to have plenty of time. I want him to have plenty of time to get relaxed in there. Now, if I would have made a huge deal of that and got abrupt with this or got scary with this, I would have given him reason to be scared about being in there too. So I want to make sure that everything that he does in there is super quiet, And just make that 
the most comfortable place in this arena. So the first few times they usually get a little confused because, okay, you told me to get in there, and then you told me to get out, and now you're telling me to get back in there again? I've got to make sure that that answer is completely clear. So we'll see if he makes that decision or if I have to help him. As long as he's getting curious about it, that's no, now he's eating. And what you want to do once you get that first time when we put him in the in the trailer, we put him in there um, and we let him sit. We let him have all the time in the world to figure out that that was the correct answer. Now that he knows that's the correct answer, we have we have to get out of kindergarten. We have to get out of preschool. So if you if you watch that, if he slightly turned left or turned right, I started applying some pressure. He knows that's where he needs to be, and that's the correct answer. And then when he went up with two, one foot and then two feet and then backed out, I had to say no again and help him out. But we're going to try it again. And you want to get real fluid with this. I'm going to go ahead and send him all the way around. And then as soon as we get done with this part, we're going to obviously get him in hand because I think a lot of it stems from that pole pressure. And when that pressure is applied, then that's when he gives that, that resistance. Again, that's that, that correct answer is up there. So I've got it. Now, if I would have hurried up and hustled on him right there, because what maybe some of you guys didn't see is that little slight try that he did, okay? And I saw it, and I almost made a mistake because our timing is very flawed compared to their timing because they're reactive creatures. So if I would have made that mistake and hurried him up, then he would have been like, I just tried, but you didn't see that. You didn't acknowledge it, so I must have done something wrong. And then he's going to try to find another answer. All right, so of course the next way is we want to be able to send him. And I know we worked on sending, uh, when I say sending, I mean lunging. It's the same thing. I just don't lunge my horses nonstop around and around to wear them out. I want to make sure that I've got softness and body control. So I'm going to go ahead and have him come out. I'm going to put my rope human right. element involved in it before. I'm still not going to go in the trailer, but I am going to send him. So I am involved now a little bit closer. And hopefully this will help. If it doesn't help, because again, having horses that are very easy to send, and that's why we do these exercises, is for times like this, going into a barn, going into a scary spot, going into a trailer. But now I'm just a little bit closer, and I've added myself into the equation a little bit here. So out here again, but now they're steering. There we go. But horses that are like this that tend to pull or push in there. There we go. Good job. Or push into pressure. Because you've got that reaction. This right here is extremely important. If I close my hand on that lead rope, or if he tries to go in and I don't feed that lead rope, he's going to hit the end of it and then come right back out of you. So he's thinking down to his feet there. So he had, he had one plan. His first plan was to back up. 
I kept applying that pressure and he shifted forward. Now if he wants to come right back out again, that's fine. I'm not going to hurry up, shut the door. I'm not going to do anything crazy like that at all. Now that I'm next to him, we're at, like I said, we're adding that human element, that predator element. It needs to be extremely quiet. And this should all go a little bit quicker and quicker as we go. Let him have plenty of time to come out. I might turn him right back around and say, no, we're not going to stay out here every time you go in there. It's a lot quieter, bud. There we go. So there he made the wrong decision. And like I said, we little by little, we have to get out of kindergarten, preschool, and all that. And move up. There we go. Licking and chewing. So at this point, he knows the correct answer is in there. Because that's the only time the pressure goes away. But if we're not consistent, he'll just go right back again. But I kid you not, guys, this is the moment. These are these little moments that as you're building these building blocks for your foundation, it saves you a ton, a ton of stress. It just saves you from having to deal with this stuff down the road. He's really trying to think down there to his feet. There we go. But you notice how careful I was not to let him hit the end of that lead rope. Because if he if he walked into pressure, I'm not going to let him come out now. If I'm sitting there telling him to move off pressure, I'll let him come out this time. But if I, 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 tell, I tell him, like right here, I'm asking him, move off that pressure. And then if he hits the pressure up there, I just got done trying to tell him, move off pressure, move off pressure. And then he hits it up there where he's supposed to be comfortable, and then he comes out here. But now we got to incorporate, we got to incorporate the pressure because this is still scary. Now I'm in here. We still got to incorporate that pressure in here to get him to remember to respect that pressure. So like I said, licking and chewing, good job. So like I said, we, we have to take it one step at a time. They're little building blocks. You want to come try this? Start applying some pressure because he's kind of out of free school now. Relax right there because he's trying. Go ahead and do it again. Relax. Just let him be for a second. Okay, now go ahead and put a little bit more pressure on him. Relax. So sweet. God, I love that. All right, just leave, just leave him alone for a while. He wants to come back out. You now you know exactly how to put him back in. So if he comes out, that's fine. If he doesn't, that's better. Let him chill in there for a minute. All right, now walk over on the door side and don't really flash that at him at all. Just walk over there and just cluck. Just walk all the way over up against the rail. Just start clucking at him. There you go. So now we're going to ask him to come out. Go ahead, up there a little bit more. And if you have to sneak that flag up in there next to him on the right, then go for it. Go ahead. He's not going to blow up or anything. He might blow out, but he's not going to blow up. Just cluck. Just pick it up a little higher. There we go. Just nice and relaxed. Come back out and around, and then send him back in again. But does that make sense to everybody? I mean, obviously, I'm not going to be able to hear you guys say yes or not. But does it make sense to everybody? That by when you have something that's super scary like a trailer for a horse, give it a round of applause. Let's just do that. Come on. There we go. But by taking little steps. So 
we took the human out of it. We took the human out of it. So it was just one scary thing. And then we stay on the outside of the trailer with the human and send them in that way. So now it's just two, but they're not in the same exact place. And then the next one will be when we actually ask the horse to walk up in the trailer with a human in there. Whether this horse is ready for that or not, yet to be seen, but we'll figure it out as we go. So go ahead and ask him to come back out, and then I'll let you use my fancy little uh, magical halter that fixes all problems. And that was a joke, by the way. Is anybody laughing? Okay. And even if it takes you three or four circles to go around before you're able to get up there, if you have to reach out and touch him, reach out and touch him, but don't step back. Always step forward and go to the shoulder, not the hip. Yep. Relax. And just let him chill. Don't let him step on that lead rope. Perfect. See, by breaking things down, easy for the horse to understand. The horse has already got the understanding. The problem is, is that we make such a damn issue out of it that when you simplify it, they're like, oh, that was it? What was all the other circus about? But we got it. All right, let's go ahead and bring him out. Hi, this is my first time ever doing a clinic, ever. My good friend Anne Marie, who owns SNS Ranch, had Mark come out and um, she's like, You should try this and do it. And actually, kind of made me do it, which is good because it got out of my comfort zone. This guy right here, Button, he kind of made me mad. <laughs> I cry a little bit. He said nobody's going to cry, but I was going to cry. But he went load and. We got him in the trailer in like a couple seconds, and it was amazing the stuff he taught and told us. And holy buckets, what amazing two days we had here! And awesome, awesome people. And I'm so sorry that I'm crying, but thank you very much. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Helping Horses Across America.